Good morning and welcome to the Bowtie Gardens. This is month 14 of our monthly garden tours. We haven't missed one yet, and we're gonna just keep going until we can't go no more. Uh, this is really my own personal journal of things that are happening in the garden, and uh, I use these uh, videos a lot when I'm looking back to see what happened when. Uh, you'll notice there's a lot of indexing down in the description below that makes the chapters in the video so I can go look for certain things a lot easier and uh, that's why I do that so I can refer back to my notes because this is my notes. I'm not a journal writer. I'm not a picture taker. I'm a video maker and it, it, it uh, sparks my brain. It sparks my uh, uh, ADD brain and uh, gets me excited to do stuff. So uh, it's what I've learned about myself. You can see we've got some stuff going on here on the front. You might even see uh, something new back over here that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. But uh, I did wanna show you one thing. Step off camera here. And uh, we will get to the fig tree shortly, but um, look at that. It's like almost a ripe fig, almost. And uh, the birds got to it this morning, just this morning. And so it was actually more to it than that. And I, I set this fig up on top of a leaf so I could do this. I went and got the, got the camera and tripod. And by the time I got out, they'd eaten about half of what was left. <laughs> so, but anyway, first ripe fig. I've got a couple of others over there that are going to be ready probably tomorrow if I can beat the birds out in the morning. And uh, so... We'll get to that in just a little bit, but yeah, things are happening. It's, it's amazing. So um, we are uh, trying to put out a, a video almost every single day. We, we have missed a couple of days, but uh, interestingly enough, I've done over 160 videos, and that's a lot considering this is only day 140 of the year. This is uh, May 20th of uh, 2023. And things have been happening. I've been, I have been working hard for several days. I actually, for the first time, did some things to prepare for today. <laughs> so, so some things would look at least semi-presentable. Uh, also, I'm personally I'm about to head out of town, so I wanted to leave uh, some areas ready for um, Mrs. Bowtie to be able to walk through and do some harvesting for me while I'm gone. And you'll see. And you'll see. Actually, I have my my. Uh, harvest bucket here and we're gonna do a little bit of harvesting on the way and then uh, we're gonna I'm planning to pause part way through the uh, raised bed tour which is part three of three on these uh, monthly garden tours and uh, we're gonna plant up some plants and uh, I'm actually gonna pause the garden tour we'll record another video that will come out later uh, and then come back to the garden tour after the planting up is done but <laughs> so the way this happens it takes me a while to get things edited and uploaded and everything has to happen and so um this is not going to show up until probably a couple of days this first part of the uh, three-part garden tour and uh it's just best i can do and trying to get through a lot of stuff here so anyway um all that being said uh let's get on with this garden tour i'm i'm a little excited because we're gonna be uh harvesting some things here uh, as we go. Uh, that's what the bucket is for. So here we go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So once again, starting off in the very southeast corner of the property, we have the wood chip pile, the everlasting zombie wood chip pile that has been there since maybe our second month of owning this house 19 months ago. And uh, so then in front of that, or behind that, I guess, because we're looking from the backside, we have the strawberry patch. And we have harvested uh, maybe almost 20 pounds of strawberries. It's been a lot. Uh, in fact, um, just on a side note, we've added a, a section to the statistics page on our um, Facebook, on our, on our website, which is bowtielife.me, and it has statistics on how much we've harvested this year, and we're up to 50 some odd pounds, uh, 23 kilos of, wow, food that we have harvested this year, so 
that's the, this is May, folks. This is our spring. We've been doing a, a lot of work, uh, but the strawberries are looking amazing. These strawberries came through the, uh, um, now I say 50 some odd pounds because um, we've been eating some of the things without weighing them, but look at that strawberry. It had a little bit of bite out of the side, but I'm gonna take a bite out of the other side. Mm. Oh. That is about the sweetest strawberry I think I've tasted. There are strawberries in here. Um, I have not been harvesting a lot. Uh, you can see there are strawberries developing. Uh, they have gotten away from me for the most part. Um, in fact, here's a, let's see what this one looks like. Get down far enough into here. Uh, not quite red, but there's no slug in it. That's still pretty good. Mm. But uh, yeah, we've eaten a lot out straight out of the garden. So, I mean, we've, we've harvested a whole lot more. Here's another one that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna bite that tip off and eat the rest of this, which looks pretty good. It's not quite there. Mmm. They're juicy though. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah look how thick these strawberries are look at their leaves are just amazing there is an occasional dollar weed in there that i will pull out when i see them there has been occasional uh, seed heads for the dollar weed which is what this is right here this is a dollar weed seed head and i pick those too and throw those out on the driveway just so they'll dry out and die but of course i'm probably proliferating the the invasion. Let's see, you look at this field of green right here, and right there is a dollar weed leaf. They hide. <laughs> There's another one. Once you start seeing, but see how long that stem is? These dollar weed are actually a water plant. They're like little lily pads, and uh, they will grow all the way up on top of the, whatever is my ground cover, in this case, strawberries, and they will act just like a little lily pad and a solar panel collecting energy but yeah we've we've gotten a lot of strawberries out of this it's been amazing again we've got red rocks in there they've been doing pretty good uh, we do have a family of squirrels that lives up on that tree and we've been getting some invasion by the squirrels uh, more along that side i've actually seen some uh half-eaten strawberries more half-eaten strawberries lately but if you'll notice right in the middle here we have a mint plant and look how full it is. This mint plant used to be just one little clump in the middle and now it's filled this 25 gallon bag. And so this thing is ready to be broken up. This thing can break broken up into five different bags and we're gonna put one in each corner of this bed and that will help a bit with the uh, squirrel invasion. Um, so, uh, mint is a good squirrel deterrent. It's not a squirrel solution, which means it's not absolute, but it does slow them down. Uh, much to my surprise, we lost another pomegranate. And I am very sad about that. That one actually had pomegranates on it. Uh, this one's taken off, but it, you can see it needs some trimming up around the bottom here. And uh, it had pomegranates it had developing pomegranates i still see a few flowers in fact let me see if i can get over here you can see there's some flowers in there there's one over here a couple over here oh oh there is i see the pomegranate now let me see if i can get around this other side i didn't see it earlier you can see that pomegranate developing right there in the end but uh it is developing it's a small tree so i don't expect uh earth-shattering production out of that. This one, of course, is the one that was dead last month. We still haven't done anything with it. However, I do want to go from that to what's replacing it is this, well, one of these trees, this plumeria is looking just amazing. Look how big those, it took forever for those leaves to come out after they died over the winter and after the Christmas freeze. Now I did bring this in, so it didn't have to sustain the total Christmas freeze. So, yeah, down here we have the uh, brown turkey fig, and I am trimming this frequently. In fact, I have some 
hand trimmers here. We are going to do a little work on this. Um, all these extra things that are growing out like pups, that look like pups, they need to come out. Absolutely need to come out. Uh, like all this, these are suckers. This is a dead branch. Let's see, we've got a new leader coming up over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off of that leader as the main tree. It's not straight, which is a little disappointing, but it's what I got. So I have been pulling weeds out of this as fast as I can. They come back just as fast, and I need to get this thing in the ground. It is a brown turkey fig, which means it creates figs that are almost as big as a, a, a baseball, maybe a racquetball. They're big, big old figs. I love this thing. So, trying to get this thing up to a central leader. I'll leave those lower uh, leaves on there. Hopefully this thing is going to start forking off up here now. But yeah, these dollar weed are just so invasive. Looky there. Okay. Yeah, I've been picking a lot of weeds out of this pot. So the other fig tree, which I thought had died again, I don't know, but I think it's coming back again. I had actually given up on this thing and I just now noticed, I had not seen this, I just now noticed this thing, I can keep the camera on what I'm doing here. It's hard to do two completely different things at a time, especially with my ADD brain. Uh, this brown turkey fig will not die. I'll be honest, I just saw this as I was talking to you. Oh, you see that white bulbule thing? That is, that is what the uh, dollar weed comes from that I was showing you earlier. That is the tuber of the dollar weed. Kind of interesting. I run across those occasionally. But get the rest of these weeds out of here so we can see what we got. This is kind of cool. This, <laughs> for the third resurrection. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This thing has been dead for a while now. Let's cut that old brown thing off. Where did my cutters go? Oh, they're right next to me. I'm gonna cut this old. Okay, so I got a pair of uh, bypass cutters, which means there's an anvil. The anvil, you always want to be on the wood you're cutting off. So you'll notice I've got it pointing up. See if I can do this one by hand. Okay. That crush, this uh, thing will crush the wood that it's against. So it doesn't matter if you're crushing the old dead wood. We're gonna take that off of there and let this thing go again. That's very exciting. This is, this is uh, the, at least the second resurrection, but I think it's the third resurrection because when I first got it, it had some trouble. And then when we had the freeze, it had some trouble. And then I was missing watering this for a while. So it had some more trouble. So <laughs> two brown turkey, <laughs> that's the fig tree that will not die. That's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go back over here across i know we've got some garlic oh uh i've been trimming the basil anybody that wants basil let me know uh if you go to church with me or i'm going to your house for a service call um i'll trim you some i've got i have, I have about 10 times more basil than we're going to use um these jalapenos are looking amazing uh, i i need to feed this one um they're getting good and big and which is new for us. We've been dealing with just small ones, I think mostly because I hadn't fed it very well, but I'm doing much better on that now. We're gonna see a lot more jalapenos and other hot peppers throughout these video tours. But the last thing over here on the Southeast side of interest is going to be the garlic. And in these grow bags, we have garlic. Now, some of these garlic are looking really rough. Um, they, they need some TLC or they need to just get harvested. And 
it is early i'm a little disappointed i've actually already harvested some but you can see like these this one right here there is no green left on it whatsoever so i'm going to reach down now this is a hard neck and it's not a very big one uh wow um this one here about the same this is not an impressive harvest at all this dirt i actually um i'll link to the video where we planted these but uh this dirt has a lot more um of the horse bedding compost in it than normal as far as percentage wise and i think it kind of hampered the development uh it didn't drain the way it should have and so um let me see if i can put these in my little harvest bucket um where is my harvest bucket i don't have my harvest bucket anymore what happened to my harvest bucket it fell off somewhere uh okay but anyway it's not it holds too much moisture is the problem and too much moisture is the, is harming the development of these garlic heads i believe i do have this little container here but we're gonna harvest oh see and it's rotting the stems it's really bad but look how kind of slimy it is it's a lot and and we didn't we had really bad horse bedding compost this year we're already on to better stuff but yeah it's it just didn't come out very good and so um, this one here you can see there's very little green left on it i'm going to go ahead and pull that yeah these are not great i've given some to friends uh, already but most of the rest of this is going to be ours we hadn't had garlic and we had very little last year um oh there it is there it is very little very small garlic heads so yeah it's disappointing it is disappointing but uh we'll try again next year and uh so see now these with any green on them i'm leaving those those are uh, some hard neck squash uh here's a couple of hard neck squash there oh look how small i'm squash garlic this is garlic david uh so yeah anyway last year we had trouble and i think we had trouble last year because of the horse bedding compost also i kind of resigned that that has been the problem so we have just gotten on to a new well you got to understand the uh place we're getting the horse bedding compost has a mountain of horse bedding compost that covers an acre it's enormous and uh it's, it's enormous it's just beyond enormous and it's been there for 20 some odd years and we had we finally found a vein of old black well composted stuff so i'm very excited about that uh coming across here next to the front door we have the mums which are looking amazing next to the yellow house so excited about that they've come back this year the way they're supposed to they sat out here during the cold and yeah oh that's so cool uh we have our um oh what are these called the uh, seedlings uh here and you'll notice the table is all the way out it got about four hours of sunlight up here uh I, I haven't brought these in at all for about four or five days our nights have gotten down to about 70 to 73 and our days have been about mid 80s generally so these seedlings we have peppers in here we have some marigolds we have uh, some tomato plants uh oh i even have some loquat trees which we need to do something with i have a couple of trays here of tray of Thai hots and a tray of dragon cayenne left that I need to do something with hopefully I can get that done today and look at I mean they're just looking fantastic I can't get over how well they're doing so if you watch many of the youtubers they'll talk to you about running your hands over your plants of course that's more if they're in a greenhouse or something they get they do get wind out here but it actually stimulates better stronger growth of stems etc so now I see a problem right here. Looky there, there's a, another seed just germinated out of that plant right there. Can't have two coming out of there. Looks like maybe another one might have tried to germinate out of this. Okay. Moving right along, the hedges. Hedges look beautiful. 
for a bow tie garden. They could use a little TLC, but as you know, I only cut these about once every two to four months. So uh, I did it just before the last garden tours. They'll get a little worse before they get better. So before we go into the pollinator beds, I'm going to come across, there's the tripod. And here's a few more bags of garlic. And you can see, looky here, here's a couple more uh, of the garlic that is completely dead. These are not great looking. So I'm pretty sure, I, again, pretty sure it was the compost proportion that I used. It was a very bad proportion, but uh, there's an there's a orange bell pepper. Um, it produces an occasional orange bell, but before I can harvest it, it's always rotted. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Mrs. Bowtie has her petunia here in the bottom of the windmill. Uh, yarrow. So this yarrow is just about to come up with a flowering head. I'm very excited. Be the first one for this since it's been in, in the garden into this area. I've actually worked very hard at keeping just the areas around some of these things as clear as I can, though it's not very easy. This dollar weed is prolific. But we have here, some of you may recognize the green globe artichoke, and they've got five of them here. Uh, they're looking strong. I still haven't seen any flower heads coming. Uh, hopefully in two weeks when I get back, there's going to be something coming out of those, but I've never grown these, so I don't know how, how they grow. But uh, yeah, that one back there is just looking amazing. And it, it's kind of, the further you get from that one, the smaller they are. This is the smallest one. I don't know why. I think that's very interesting. But anyway, sunchokes, sunroot, Jerusalem artichokes. And look at them going. In fact, wanted to show you of interest. I just, I was looking over there somewhere and I saw another one coming up because remember, this is the area where I planted it last year and I've been trying to control it. Every time I find a strong growth, I put it over here, but look at this thing right here. This is one of them that I transplanted just two days ago and it's really kind of faltering. It doesn't look that great. So I'm curious if it will actually pick up by the time I get back in a couple weeks. So I'll release a short on that uh, if it does. So it had a pretty good size tuber on it. Not quite golf ball size, but it was a, it, it still had some energy in it. The fig tree. This is our big producer and I've got four liters. I don't, I do not have a central liter. I wish I did, but uh, I'm not worried about it. I'm trying to get this thing to grow out healthy into a kind of more of a bush style. But looky right down in here. You can see there is a fig that I think will be ready tomorrow. Can you see that right there? Almost. Uh, yeah, I'm just very excited about that thing. It's gonna be beautiful. Uh, we want to eat, we would love to eat one fig off here, but there are others. There's one over there. There's, uh, there's one right down in here. So. We do have other figs. There's, I see one. Each leader has a couple of uh, figs on it. So maybe we'll get something out of this before the season's done. Okay. Coming across to the pollinator beds. Uh, first off, we actually had sunflowers. And I even trimmed a sunflower uh, to put on Mrs. Bowtie's office desk vase, which is very exciting. This is uh, These are Rostoff. Uh, they're not doing fantastic, but they are beautiful. I need to do more of them. In fact, um, today I'll probably work on getting some of those up. I'm still looking for my orange uh, harvest bucket. Don't know what happened to it. Oh, I found it. It was hanging around my knee. There we go. Good grief. <laughs> All right. Well, now it's not hanging anywhere. So in here we have some rain lilies which are, looks like that grass right there. They're looking quite sorry. I've kind of been working hard to keep those dollar weed away. They have been really rough. The dollar weed have just, have just been very invasive to these. And it looks like grass, but these are the rain lilies. If you, if you watch my channel, these are those delicate little pink flowers. That, oh, that are that color right there. I wonder, I, did I miss one possibly? I don't think so. Anyway. So look at the yarrow here. This yarrow is just about to flower. 
This is an humble flower. In fact, uh, I was watching, uh, oh, Brian over at uh, Next Level Gardening. He wrote a book. In fact, let me go get that because I brought it out. Uh, it's on my tripod here. And I wanted to show it. We, we talk about companion planting. That means plants, one plant goes with another plant. They like planting basil with tomatoes. Doesn't make it taste better, but it does control some, some of the pests and confuse some of the pests. But he wrote a book, uh, Companion Planting for Beginners. And uh, I'll tell you what, this has been a fantastic book uh, for me. Uh, it talks about what goes with what, what flowers to plant with what. But anyway, one of those is yarrow and these umble, umble plant flowers. They do an umbrella uh, of a flower and they attract some beneficial uh, predator insects like one of them is the parasitic wasp that will eat some of the problems in the garden. And uh, I only have about four of these. I want to plant up more of the uh, yarrow for next year. But this is a perennial, which means it's going to be here year after year after year. And I've got two of them here right next to each other. This one is flowering. I'm so excited. And we'll see what that does. But, of course, lots and lots of zinnias. Zinnias is another good um, plant to go with companion planting. So we have a lot of zinnias in here. Uh, you'll notice we have some of these onions. But the, the uh, zinnias, I've been deadheading. Um, and like when you get a when you get a flower that's dead like this one right here, pinch it off, and those are seeds right there. What you see right inside there, those are seeds. And so you just take this. Now the wind is kind of blowing, so I'm going to come around this other side, and you just take those and drop them into the bed, and those will plant. Those will become flowers this year. We're just in May got months for these things to start planting. Birds will get some. Some of them will grow. You know how I know? That's how I planted out all these zinnias right here. Even that big white zinnia right up in there. All these were just deadheading. That's it. It's awesome. Uh, we did the short on the angel trumpet. And I got to show you this because I'm very, very excited. It is about to make a show. Oh my goodness. This thing has almost a dozen angel trumpets. Um, I'll, I'll link to the video in the cards and it's somewhere else on this video in the description, but um, these things come out with about a foot long flower. Uh, there's two there, there's one over there. Um, there's one up over here hanging down. And then there's also on the other side, see if I can get over here, there's two more here. It'll be blooming soon. So hopefully I'll be back by then and we can, they don't last very long, but they're beautiful. So that's my angel trumpet plant right there. And then of course the onions, these are my Egyptian walking onions and they are walking. They are starting to grow across. In fact, this is the one I've already showed. Uh, these things grow up. They grow these heads like that right there. The heads split off and become heavier and heavier. And then they, force themselves over into the ground and they grow new plants. So this is a new plant growing, a new cluster of plants. Each one of these clusters, there's a cluster there, cluster there. Each one of these clusters start off as one or two shoots. Look at them now. These are like green onions. Cut these off, you can cook with them. You can make powder. We did a video on making powder with these. Uh, yeah, very cool. Second pollinator bed back here. Now there are some uh, what people would consider weeds, but they are flowering. Uh, there's a lot of dollar weed and grass in here. I'm gonna have to clean out this middle. We actually had some zinnias in the middle here, but looks like the grass has taken over. Gonna have to take care of that. But look at all the zinnias over here. These are all from deadheading. Just taking the flower, breaking it. In fact, you can see some. there's some deadheads right here. Be careful where I'm stepping. See that right there? dead flower. Oop, where'd it go? I completely lost it. Where'd it go? Well, here's another one. It's okay because it'll break apart, but see, those are all the seeds in there. All seeds falling out. And you just let those things go in the wind. That's how they propagate themselves. 
So we're going to have a swath of those pink ones right across here in a couple months. There is an amaryllis down in there trying to come up. Uh, another amaryllis coming over here. Amaryllis have already bloomed for the year, I think, but they are just going to be green for the rest of the year. Kind of adds a little bit of texture. We have our, you can see our uh, Thai plants. We got four of them in here. Four Thai plants coming in. I think that is everything here. Uh, I do want to point out one thing, and, and this, is, this is kind of important. Uh, nasturtium. Nasturtium is actually a really good companion plant. Biggest reason is because they typically run off um, snails. Now, they, they're not perfect. They do get a little nibble on them, but now these are nasturtium. And I want to pull over here a dollar weed and a nasturtium leaf. Leaf. Dollar weed leaf. Here we go. So, trying to get these next to each other. They look very similar. Very similar. They have the stem in the middle. You can see this stem is slightly off center. This stem is a little more, this leaf is a little more glossy. This is the dollar weed here. Uh, dollar weed is typically like right there. That I can tell is a dollar weed. They're very hard to tell apart though, but when you pull them, look at there, this is the telltale right here. That is what dollar weed comes from. We didn't get a tuber on that one, doggone it. But these things grow eight, 10 feet long. You can see there's white things down there where I've pulled up other sections. So nasturtium, I think I've got some either. I, I, oh yeah, no, no, these are the tall ones. These are the giant nasturtium that are coming up right here. So over the pollinator beds, we have this massive sycamore tree. This thing is enormous. This is healthy. This is the way the bark is supposed to look. It's an American sycamore. Here is my hand. <laughs> it's huge. And uh, it is actually here on the Florida Panhandle. It is actually a, considered a hurricane safe uh, tree. Interestingly enough, with those huge leaves up there, um, what it does, if it encounters heavy, heavy winds, it will actually release the leaves and reduce its own uh, wind, wind drag. And it will become less of a drag in, in high winds. It could still go down, but the roots from this tree cover this whole front yard, everything. I haven't dug in a square foot of this front yard where I hadn't run into roots for that tree. Plus we're up on a bank here, has about a six foot drop off over here and there's good drainage up in here. So those roots go down deep as well. But uh, the crepe myrtles, um, we saw a few flowers. Uh, if that was gonna be all the flowers, I'll be a little disappointed. I haven't seen anything since what, a month or two ago? And it just didn't do a lot this year. I wonder if it was because of the really cold weather. Uh, I don't know. It's been a little disappointing, uh, but see, now that um, decorative pear tree, the doomed decorative pear tree, it showed flowers for like four days this year and it was very paltry. So that kind of tells me maybe the crepe myrtles just weren't gonna show this year. I haven't seen any beautiful crepe myrtles this year. Cedar tree down the end there, of course, uh, still needs a little bit of trim up in some areas. The uh, Pindo date uh, is actually producing dates up there. In fact, I want to come over here close, get you to kind of see. In fact, let's uh, let's go grab the ladder because there's two things happening up there at the same time. So I will admit, I don't go up this thing very often, simply for this right here. I'm not crazy about heights, but this ladder does represent the extent of my abilities. But there's a few things going, so I really wanted to show this pendo date. Let me grab on here. There's some big spiky things right here. So, the life of the pendo date starts off, and you can hear my shirt tearing, starts off with this big spike right here. This is solid. And inside here is developing the dates. And there's one there. There's a smaller one over there. When they break open, it comes out with all these flowers. 
and you can see all those flowers right there. Here in about a week, those flowers are going to be covered with bees. And then after that, after the flowers get pollinated, they start developing the, the pindo dates. Now these are edible. They are massively high in pectin, which means after you, if you try to eat some, and it has a huge pit in it, but when you try to eat them, after about three or four, you're gonna feel like you're chewing on a mouthful of, uh, oh, I don't know, dental floss, because they, a lot of pectin in them. And then you can see that brown thing over there. Uh, that is the final stage after they've all fallen off. That's one I haven't been able to get to. Oh, here's a, uh, here's a spike that never developed. I haven't seen that yet. Here's a, here's an old dry one that didn't develop. You can see in here all the little branches. Anyway, that's the pendo date. Here's an old spent, whoa. <laughs> here is the, the old spent husk right there. So, pendo dates, very interesting. You make jelly, you can make wine. When I'm up, ever I'm up this tree, I always check these things, see if they're ready to come off like that. They rot, give way at different rates. Those will get left out on the curb for our waste management crew that does a fantastic job in our area. Before we cover the sugar snow peas, I just wanted to do a brief run over on these onions and uh, definitely look better than last year. You can see there's uh, definitely some bulbing going on underneath there. This is real fluffy soil, so they have plenty of opportunity to bulb up. Uh, some of these are more impressive than others, though they're still not fantastic. Um, oh, bug right there. What are you doing? Go away. Anyway, the basil, I've been trimming off the tops. They've been bushing out, looking good. Uh, this onion here, uh, this is one of my earliest bulbing onions. You can see the stem is starting to get floppy, which is a sign that this thing is coming close to being ready. So, I, oh, I just noticed this one's bulbing underneath here. They're looking good. Woo, that's a nice one. Uh, this is bow tie. I like those for cooking. This one here is looking hefty. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff going on in the onions and the basil. Um, this side, the, 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 the north side, looks a little better than the south side. We'll go around to the south side briefly. You can see the basil is getting pretty hard hit with the sun but these onions they're they're doing the same they're actually they're a little behind the others but they're planted the same day and they're looking pretty close now these out in the sun right here uh, are actually looking better and as you go down further and further here they look more and more wimpy so and in fact they died down the very end down there i never did plant replant them because i figured it'd be useless but yeah Oops, something's been digging right here. Squirrel. See if he's buried a nut or something. Nope. I haven't seen very many peanuts here. As the, like, like we did in the apartment. So onions do not like to be touched by other things. They are very adverse to it. That's a little bulb down there. So you got to try to keep these weeds at bay. Oh, there's a nice long dollar weed. Look at that, look at that. That's a rewarding pull right there. Woo! What's that, about three feet worth of dollar weed? Yay. So that's the front yard trees. And that takes us down to you guessed it, the sugar snow peas. These are mammoth melting sugar snow peas, and I have been harvesting a lot off of these. Uh, I just put the weed fabric, I mean the shade fabric up a week ago, and I'm hoping we can squeeze another month out of these. It is amazingly cool inside this arch. I didn't expect that massive amount. Of, I mean, it's just a few degrees, but um, these are the sugar snow peas. And if you like uh, this, you, you eat this whole. Just like that. And they are sweet. Mm. They're great on salads, great in stir fry, whatever else you can do. 
with these. I'm not the chef, but we're getting a lot of them this year. So we actually only had about eight feet of these last year. So we are getting a lot more, but you really have to search through there here to find these. And see like that right there. And it will start petering out. Now that one right there is a little small. I'll leave that for another day. That one's a little small too. So I'll leave that another day too. Mm, 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 mm. So good, that one's plenty big. And now if they get any bigger than this and start massing up in here, they start getting strings in them. And uh, again, feel like you're eating dental floss here, but here's two right there. That one's too small. And the different, different peas are different. Some of them don't grow as big. Some of them grow bigger. These actually grow pretty good size. This is kind of borderline. I'm not gonna pick that yet. Mrs. Bowtie will be taking over harvesting these while I'm gone. But I just kind of go up and down each side. Uh, here's one right there. Now you can actually shake these and you'll notice, you see how the pea actually shakes at a different frequency from the vine. Kind of makes it a little easier to see. That's a little small. Got to watch down low, look up high, because they develop over the whole thing. Well, I think that's it for this side. I did just harvest these yesterday. Got quite a bit off of them. But uh, I happen to know right here is a bunch of them. Look at this. I guess one, two, uh, three, Ooh, oh, these are so delicious. I will confess, a lot of these don't make it into the kitchen or into the statistics page of our website on Bowtie Life on how much we've harvested for the year. These are just barely harvestable. But I know by tomorrow they will be plenty big, so. The smaller they are, the tender. I mean, these little itty bitty ones are very tender but you just kind of want to let them grow a little bit big, bigger. It's kind of, and it's a very fine line. You have to kind of experiment with them. Um, see, there's a little tiny one. That thing there will be tender. And you can eat the whole, in fact, you can eat the whole plant. The leaves, everything is, is edible on this one. Um, but I haven't had very many pea shoots yet. We could. Oh, here's a couple more. These are borderline. And the thing about these is, the more you pick, the more you'll harvest. You just kind of keep keep coming back every day. Well, not every day. I come back uh, every other day. Dropped one. Look at all the dollar weed down here. Uh, I've been coming out every two or three days picking. Yeah, I think that's it. But yeah, from walking out here in the sun to walking in there, there's probably a couple few degrees different, which is really impressive. There's a couple on the end here. Up here in the asparagus patch on the northeast corner of the property, we have one beautiful asparagus plant growing. We have another one struggling down in here somewhere. Um, we have a one failed over here. I know the weeds have kind of gotten out of hand here. Gonna have to attack this a little better, but I do. I am pleased with that one asparagus plant. We've got two beautiful basil plants right there. They're looking strong. I keep the dollar weed from just immediately around there. Uh, jalapeno pepper plant needs some feed. More garlic over here. Uh, nothing I want to harvest quite yet. They're still green. As long as there's green on them, I'm not gonna harvest. I'm standing under the shade under the pindo date right now. But the, uh, another chocolate mint, all we have in the front yard right now is chocolate mint. This is kind of interesting. You know, some people use chocolate mint as a uh, cover crop to keep stuff like this from being able to take hold, but this thing's got dollar weed in it too. Dollar weed is prolific. 
So the grapefruit tree, and I wanted to compare this grapefruit. In fact, let me uh, get a better angle here. This is my favorite angle of the grapefruit tree. You can kind of see all the new growth coming out of it since the last uh, freeze over Christmas. There's a few tips that might need to come out. That branch in the back over there is really looking bad. I'm giving it every possible chance. There is still some green down lower um, in that back branch. Just hoping, 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 hoping. Uh, but you can see my neighbor's uh, grapefruit tree, almost identical. He did a lot of trimming. He actually didn't couldn't get to the top of his, but that's okay. You can see how much uh, growth is coming out on his. Very cool. The major difference being between his and mine, his is up against the house. So during that north wind, which we're looking north right now, during that north wind which came up over his house that tree was protected this tree was not very well protected so the fact that it's that far in comparison i'm i'm not complaining so following the uh, grapefruit tree we have two satsuma orange trees neither of which look very healthy at all completely due to the freeze this one i am convinced is completely dead above the graft line all that coming up is from the rootstock I'm going to look into grafting some new stuff on there. This over here is the other Satsuma orange tree, which seems like it might try to survive. It needs some more help, though. Left of the three citrus in the side yard here, we have the grape arbor. Of course, we have our wooden trellis here. You saw me put up in a video. But my first year ever growing grapes. And looky here. We actually have some grapes. They're very hard. Um, it looks like we might have lost, oh, nope, there's some developing there. This is really thick. Uh, it's gonna need to be trimmed back uh, at the end of this year. I don't know how many grapes we're gonna get off this, so we'll just have to see what happens. I do have an ivy coming up here. Is that an ivy? No? No, it doesn't. maybe not, maybe not, okay. Still learning how to look at this. But yeah, grapes, there's far too much grapes for this small arbor too, way too much. So past the grape arbor, of course, we have our seedling area and uh, you saw the seedlings on the front porch. In fact, they're coming over here uh, today. They're gonna be put up against the house over here because they're not quite ready for as much sun as say these guys are. And of course, onions and tomatoes and peppers, sunflowers, there's a, uh, Somewhere in here, there's a, a broccoli or something. I can't remember. There's a backup artichoke plant in there. Oh, there's some, uh, there's some Kajari melon plants over there. There are a couple of uh, um, Suyu Longs. I kind of keep these in reserve. These are my reserve stock. They don't look great, and I come over here and I'll pull off buds when I see them, but uh, I just let them go here. Now, the reason why I know that is if you look at these plants down here, these here were grown July 22nd of last year. They've been in these solar cups. They're still solo cups. They're still surviving. Look at their, their stems are awfully woody, but they're still legitimate plants. And they, when they get put into the ground, they shoot off, they take off, it's amazing. These are, these are, what's that? Uh, nine months, ten, ten month, nine months old, nine or 10 months old? Nine, uh, 10, yeah, right at 10 months old. And they're still in those solo cups, just waiting to reach their potential. And you can see like right here, there's these little buds. Take those off. Let it just kind of be dormant. That's it. We still have, rosemary and pomegranate trees and all kinds of stuff in reserve. Some are dying, doesn't really matter. We have so many. We have a uh, um, poinsettia plants here, which are great white fly trap plants, or in my experience. Uh, the citronella is, is petering out a little bit there. Uh, that I have a citronella down the end there. A lot of pepper plants here. There's some peri-peri over here that I've been harvesting. Oh my goodness, look at these things. This is a peri-peri plant. I've been harvesting these as I, as I see them. 
Nice hot pepper. This is the one that we uh, ate instead of shishito one night. Mrs. Bowtie was very unhappy with me. There's a fatale over there. Um, is that a jalapeno? Can't be. I have no idea what that is. Could be a jalapeno. It's a little anemic or something. We need to take care of that. Uh, Scotch bonnet. Been watching these for a couple months now. These are very slow to develop, apparently. Um, because these peppers have been here for a number of days now, or a number of months now. Uh, there's either an orange bell or a Chinese giant. Uh, more scotch bonnet. These will become yellow when they're ready. Jalapeno, another jalapeno. Orange bell. No idea. What is this? No idea. Um, orange bell supposed to be. Orange bell does don't seem to be doing good here. I have a lot of trouble with those here. Another citronella, mint. There's more of those rain lilies. Another citron uh, citronella plant. That's a mountain mint. Last thing I wanted to show here though was man, look at these blueberries. Oh my goodness, these blueberries. I have been harvesting as much as I can. Uh, I am losing ground. They are delicious. It doesn't take me but 20, 30 minutes to, to harvest half a pound. And, uh, whoops, that one can go. But uh, yeah, tons and tons of blueberries ready to go. So look at my video on how to how to choose your right blueberries. Because I don't pull all of them. I leave some to ripen some more. I leave some for the birds. We want to work with nature. These belong to the birds as much as they belong to me. But I get most of them. Or as, at least as many as I can harvest. Holy cow. Just look at these. Just hundreds of them. In fact, at the beginning of the next part of this uh, garden tour, we're going to, you know, we normally walk through the gate over there. We're going to walk straight through the blueberries. I want to show you just what it looks like through there. So that's the front and side garden tours. Whew. It's getting warm out here. I think we're supposed to hit mid eighties today. I'm trying to stay in the shade as much as I can. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat a lot, but, uh, anyway, if, uh, if you have not yet subscribed, please do. Uh, subscribing helps grow the, the channel. And if you have subscribed and you come back to watch another part, thank you so much, because that helps a lot too, watching the videos. Uh, another thing that helps is uh, clicking the thumbs up. If you thought this is entertaining, informational, educational, please click the thumbs up and share it on your social media page. Um, for your friends that might be interested in gardening. This uh, grape arbor makes a very nice shade right now. Got grape arbor on this side and 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 uh, sycamore tree on that side. And I'm kind of right in the middle right here. <laughs> this little strip of sun in the middle. But anyway, uh, yeah. So a lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff has happened. A lot of things have changed. The shade cloth and the over the sugar snow peas is a big thing. I'm loving it. I like to be able to pick out there, but for, unfortunately, we pick early in the morning. Um, um, on the fortunate side, though, uh, the basil seems to be keeping the. Does basil keep slugs away? Oh, I've got nasturtium in there too. So something's keeping the slugs away. So there's not a lot of damage on the bottom of those sugar snow peas. There's a big old bumblebee right here. But uh, anyway, the blueberry harvest is in full swing, as you just saw. Uh, so, so much excitement uh, in the garden. And, uh, you, I'm, you know, time like this, I just, I have to go for my trip. And boy, I'm not sure what's going to happen while I'm gone. I got to, I got to just have some patience and, Give, give the garden a couple weeks and see what happens to it. But uh, yeah, so uh, was there anything else I was gonna cover here? I can't, oh yeah, so yeah, we'll be going into the 
next part. I'm actually going to re be recording it um, just as soon as I'm done here. And I'm gonna start off with a walk through the back side of the blueberries. Uh, so that's, a, that's kind of a, an adventure through there. Uh, we do have the bee box on the other side, so it's going to call for a change of my red hat because if you've watched any of my videos, you know how me, red hats, and those bees don't get along. So <laughs> normally, when I forget and wear a red hat back there, uh, we have trouble. So I have trouble. The bees guard their area very well. They're a very good bee box, but uh, and they do an amazing job pollinating everything. We very seldom have things that don't get pollinated. Very seldom. They're fantastic. So just based on that alone, I'm very happy with them. But uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, this is my personal journal of things going on in the garden. I use this frequently. I watch these frequently to remind myself of what's going on. Uh, try to figure out what happened like the garlic yeah so yeah I gotta figure out the proportions on my garlic uh, I know I was hard for cash and I was hard for the right proportions of what I needed and so um, just had to do what I could <laughs> yeah anyway um, yeah I guess we're coming down to the end here and and uh, um, Stay tuned for part two of three of the garden tour. That's going to be the outer beds. There's a few things going on in the outer beds. Uh, not a lot to see, but there are a few things going on. So all that being said, I'm tired. I got to go take a break for a few minutes and uh, cool down before I start the backyard. But uh, you know what I say. Say it with me. Have a blessed day.